So, like I say, there are going to be some things in this which uh, you will be new to you, and I'll try and remember to walk through things in a way that you can follow. Um, so, what we've got, we've got this very basic mono synth again. Eventually, what you can do is to complexify this and then integrate it into your polyphony. Notice that at the moment we have a situation whereby when we hit a note on the keyboard, it plays. When we release the note, it remembers that that is a note off and it will stop the note. So at this point, we need to save what we've got. All right, this is important. Go to save. And we will save the uh, what we've got in the normal place. So it'll default to this max instrument um, and we can save it there. So I'm going to call it poly sign oops, sign synth x because I've already built one of these. Enter that. Oh, it's already got one. X2 then. There we go. So it saved it. And then I need to save my Ableton session. So I've saved the max patch, but I need also to save my Ableton session. So I'm going to go back to the Ableton session and then save that. So save live set as, and I will save it somewhere useful. Um, so you just need maybe save it on your desktop or somewhere that you know you can find it easily. So we'll call that. Uh, my poly synth. Remember where you put it because you're going to need to go back there in a minute. So we've saved the max patch, we've saved the Ableton session, and now we need to do one other thing, which is in Ableton, go to File, and then Collect All and Save. Comes up with this little dialog box, and you just ignore everything in there, it doesn't matter, just press OK. So I'm just going to bring across those instructions. Um, you can download these, by the way, at any time. They're on this week's Blackboard shell. But those were those three important steps. So in Max, which was this bit, you need to save this patch to anywhere. So your normal Ableton um, file path and just call it something. It doesn't really matter where it saved it in this case. The next thing you need to do though is important. So in Ableton Live, so you need to click back onto Ableton and then go to File, Save Live Set As, and then save it somewhere useful to you and remember where you've saved it. And then the third thing was go to File and then collect all and save. And that will keep everything saved. So it's down here, collect all and save. Now what that's done, let's go back to where I've saved this stuff. So I saved it in my week 23 demo. And which one was it? Here it is. My Polysynth project, it's in there. And what it's done is it's um, taken my file that I made, which was the Max instrument, and I, it's put it in this, it's associated it with this folder. So that's, you should see that if you go to where you saved it on your desktop or wherever. You should see that the PolySign synth that you made is within this hierarchy. And I know that sounds like a real ball ache, but it's... Uh, it's important. Now we can go back to our, our max patch. Right, so next step within this, this uh, process, we're going to add an ADSR envelope because at the moment we just have start and stop. But maybe we want something a bit more sophisticated than that. We want an envelope for it. So we're going to make a new object and it's called ADSR. We have looked at this before briefly, but ADSR meaning attack, decay, sustain and release. And we're going to add some arguments. I'm going to write in 10 for, so it's going to be a 10 millisecond ramp up. 
100 millisecond ramp down to a sustain point, then my sustain point is going to be at 0 0.6 of also 60% of how loud I originally hit the key, and then 200 milliseconds for it to uh, decay to zero after I've released the key. Okay, so if you put in those values, hopefully it'll start to make sense when you hear what it's doing. I'm going to do a little trick here, which you might want to know. I've got this um, selected. I'm going to press the shift key. And if I drag that between uh, the divide box and the multiplication box, it inserts it, which is quite handy. It means that you don't have to disconnect and reconnect everything. That's not such a big deal, but it can speed up your workflow a little bit. You can do the same, by the way, to drag something out. So if I press the Shift key, drag it out, it gets rid of it. That's something they only implemented recently, but it might be useful. OK, so now we have an ADSR envelope. So now you can hear that there is an attack. Uh, you, it's, it's actually a much smoother attack. And when I, when I release the key, it's, uh, it, it gives me a, a slower decay as well. So that ADSR object is quite handy. Let's get rid of that for the moment. OK, so the next thing, done step three. Then I'm going to do something which is going to make no sense to you whatsoever, but it's important for our process. Yes, I'm going to move all of this down. And I'm going to add a pack and an unpack object. So I'll make it first, and I'll explain what I've done. So I need to put a write in pack, then space, zero, space, and then zero. And again, I'm going to insert that between, oops, sorry, now it's wrong. There and there. And I'm going to make an unpack object. There we go. So I've I've done something which is totally redundant there. I'm packing these two values, which are the note number and the velocity, into a single message. And then I'm unpacking them again. And there is a reason for that. So this is another, this is the next stage. Select everything from unpack downwards to the multiplication object. So make sure all of those are selected. Then I want you to go to Edit and Encapsulate. OK, so as I say, select everything, go to Edit and then Encapsulate. And what that will do is it shoves everything into its own kind of meta object. Um, and then I can actually call that something. So. I need to make sure I don't get rid of that P when I write the new name in. But if I cl double click on the object and then click again to the right hand side of the P, I can then write in my voice. So the P needs to stay there. Click on that. OK. And what we've basically done is we've made a new, in the same way as all of these objects do their own little thing, we've made a new object that contains all of the stuff that will allow our patch to work. So now if I press the command key and double click on this, then I can see everything that I just selected is now back in, in, in this kind of sub patch. Okay. Another way that you can get to it is if you lock the patch and then double click on that P object, it'll open up in a new window. OK, so the stuff that we just made is still there, but it's just been put into a, a sub object, sub patch. So that's the reason why we needed the unpack object, because we were packing everything into a message and we want it all to go down a single message and then be unpacked in this, in this voice. Then I need to do something else, which is a bit confusing, but again, makes sense if uh, a little bit later on. Um, we've got these inlets and outlets which are taking data into and out from our from our patch, but I'm going to I'm going to use 
something else as inlets and outlets. So I'm making new objects and I'm going to put in one and then out one, whoops, out tilde one. So this is in one and then out tilde one. You can leave these objects, these inlets and outlets there, they're not doing anything, but that's okay. And then my next step is we're going <coughs> to make an, what's called an abstraction out of this patch. So this is a sub patch that's kind of stored within the patch that I'm working with. But I'm going to save this so that we can call it as its own individual object. So this is where I was telling you to save it in a particular place. Make sure that my voice is in the front. Go to save as, file save as. And this time we want to navigate to where we were before. So don't just save it where it was. We need to go back to where you saved your um, patch and find the hierarchy that we looked at just before. So I'm going back into Max Instrument and I'm going to save that there as my voice. And now when I go into back into my patch. So if I now make a new, new object in here, that's not called it, why not? There we go. So you may need to resave the PolySign synth that you made, the, the original patch. But that means I can have any, any number of these objects and they all contain the same thing. Right, we're getting there now. So three more steps and then you'll have your polysynth. So I'm going to get rid of these now because I don't actually need them. What I do need is to write in poly and this tilde. My voice, which is the name of the patch that I've just made. And then I'm going to tell it that I want five different versions of that. So the poly tilde object is basically what we use to get polyphony. And what it'll do is it'll take those individual patches that we were using to generate sound and it multiplies them. Don't worry about this at steel bit at the end. I do give an explanation in this pink document. And we're going to replace this original voice, which is only one instance of that, that voice, with this poly tilde object. Like that. So now what I want to do is to go into that poly tilde object. And I do that by pressing the command key or the control key if you're on Windows, double clicking, and it opens all of that up. Then I need to click on this pen tool on the bottom left hand side. So I click on that, then I can unlock it. So this, this should now be editable. Make this a bit bigger so you can see. And I need to add one more object. So if I make a this poly tilde. And I need to connect it to two places, or from two places. I need to connect it from this left hand outlet of the ADSR object and this third outlet as well, like that. So you should have a spotty cable and a grey cable from the first outlet and the third outlet into this poly. And so I save that. Basically what that's doing is it's recognising um, how many things are playing at a time. So it's, it's, it's kind of self-analysing. So I'm going to close that. 
And then the last step is to add something called a prepend MIDI note. So what that's doing is for every um, bit of information it gets from note in that says the note number and the velocity, it's adding um, a MIDI note message to the beginning of that. So if I put on um, you'll be able to see what it's done. So I press a key, now we've got MIDI note 60 and 68. Okay, and that should have worked. So I should now be able to press more, more notes than, there you go. So I can have five notes at a time. They're distorting because it's too loud. Oops. So we have, a, we have some polyphony. Once you've made that very basic polyphonic kind of setup, <clears throat> you can just develop it as much as you want. So for example, I could go back into um, poly tilde. So again, I press the command and double click on it. Um, unlock it, just make sure it's unlocked. Then I can, for example, I'll drag this all out to here. I can put in, um, what can I put in? Well, I could do something that we've done several times before, which is to put in a um, selector object and maybe a uh, couple of in inlets, so three inlets. I could put sawtooth wave and a uh, triangle wave. Connect those up. Again, I'm going quickly now because I'm just showing you what you can do. You don't have to follow along with this bit. Put them into the various selector inlets like we've done before. There we go. And then from this selector outlet, go into there. And now normally we had put in a number box to be able to control the uh, oscillator that we use. The problem is that we can't see it. As soon as I close this patch, we won't be able to see that because it's because um, it's within this polytilder object. So I'm going to use a way to um, to communicate with all instances of that within this patch which will be a send and receive objects, which we looked bri at briefly last week. So, um, timbre. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then in the main patch, I can put um, send timbre. And put a number box to there. So what will happen is that whenever I change this value, you watch this uh, number box down here. Whenever I change it, that will be updated as well. So now if I save this, uh, my voice, close it. What we should have when I press a key, nothing at the moment because um, none of the things are open, but if I choose a new timbre, I can have a sine wave, I can have a uh, sawtooth, I've got polyphony. Like that. Um, and you could do any, you know, all of the stuff we did earlier with additive synthesis you could implement in here as well. You could send stuff through to the ADSR um, object in order to change the ADSR values over time. All of those things you can do just by kind of adding a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more to this particular patch.